Children present with a wide variety of problems which need to be identified and treated. We've seen some in previous chapters and we'll now look at other common disorders you'll see often in the clinic. A child with an ear problem may have an ear infection. When a child has an ear infection, pus collects behind the eardrum and causes pain and often fever. If the infection is not treated, the eardrum may burst. The pus discharges and the child feels less pain. The fever and other symptoms may stop, but the child suffers from poor hearing because the eardrum has a hole in it. Usually the eardrum heals by itself. At other times, the discharge continues, the eardrum does not heal, and the child becomes deaf in that ear. Sometimes the infection can spread from the ear to the bone behind the ear, the mastoid, causing mastoiditis. Infection can also spread from the ear to the brain, causing meningitis. These are severe diseases. They need urgent attention and referral. Ear infections rarely cause death, however they cause many days of illness in children. Ear infections are the main cause of deafness in developing countries and deafness causes learning problems in school. The Assess and Classify chart helps the health worker identify ear problems due to ear infection. A child with ear problem is assessed for ear pain, ear discharge and, if discharge is present, how long the child has had discharge and tender swelling behind the ear, a sign of mastoiditis. There are four classifications for ear problem. Mastoiditis, acute ear infection, chronic ear infection, no ear infection. The health worker must check all sick children for signs suggesting malnutrition and anemia. A mother may bring her child to the clinic because the child has an acute illness. The child may not have specific complaints that point to malnutrition or anemia. A sick child can be malnourished, but the health worker or the child's family may not notice the problem. A child with malnutrition has a higher risk of many types of disease and death. Even children with mild and moderate malnutrition have an increased risk of death. Identifying children with malnutrition and treating them can help prevent many severe diseases and death. Some malnutrition cases can be treated at home. Severe cases need referral to hospital for special feeding, blood transfusion or specific treatment of a disease contributing to malnutrition, such as tuberculosis. There are several causes of malnutrition. They may vary from country to country. One type of malnutrition is protein energy malnutrition. Protein energy malnutrition develops when the child is not getting enough energy or protein from his food to meet his nutritional needs. A child who has had frequent illnesses can also develop protein energy malnutrition. The child's appetite decreases and the food that the child eats is not used efficiently. When the child has protein energy malnutrition, the child may become severely wasted, a sign of marasmus. The child may develop edema, a sign of classical. The child may not grow well and become stunted, too short. A child whose diet lacks recommended amounts of essential vitamins, such as vitamin A or minerals, such as iron, can develop malnutrition. Not eating foods that contain vitamin A can result in vitamin A deficiency. A child with vitamin A deficiency is at risk of death from measles and diarrhoea. The child is also at risk of blindness. Not eating foods rich in iron can lead to iron deficiency and anemia. Anemia is a reduced number of red cells or a reduced amount of haemoglobin in each red cell. All sick children must be assessed for malnutrition and anemia. A child with visible severe wasting has marasmus, a form of severe malnutrition. A child has this sign if he is very thin, has no fat and looks like skin and bones. Some children are thin but do not have a visible severe wasting. This assessment step helps the health worker identify children with visible severe wasting who need urgent treatment and referral to a hospital. Look for red mid-upper arm circumference, M-U-A-C, strip. 
A small arm circumference, red on the MUAC tape, identifies children with marasmus. The circumference of the arm is the distance around the arm. A child with a reading on the red MUAC strip indicates that the arm is less than 11.5 centimetres wide, which is a sign of severe malnutrition. Such a child requires referral to a health facility for further management. A child whose arm shows yellow, an arm size between 11.5 centimetres and 13.5 centimetres, indicates mild to moderate malnutrition and can be treated with supplementary feeding in an outpatient department. A child whose MUAC is showing green indicates that the child is growing well and the arm size is greater than 13.5 centimetres. A child with edema of both feet may have quasicor, another form of severe malnutrition. Edema is when unusually large amounts of fluid gathers in the child's tissues. The tissues become filled with the fluid and look swollen or puffed up. The health worker should look and feel to determine if the child has edema of both feet. He uses his thumb to press gently for a few seconds on the top side of each foot. The child has edema if a dent remains in the child's foot when the health worker lifts his thumb. Weight for age compares the child's weight with the weight of other children who are of the same age. The health worker will identify children whose weight for age is below the bottom curve of a weight for age chart. These are children who are very low weight for age. Children on or above the bottom curve of the chart can still be malnourished. But children who are below the bottom curve need special attention to how they are fed. The health worker uses the WHO weight for age chart to determine weight for age. He calculates the child's age in months. He weighs the child if he has not already been weighed. He uses a scale which he knows gives accurate weights. The child should wear light clothing when he has been weighed. To determine weight for age, he looks at the left-hand axis to locate the line that shows the child's weight. He looks at the bottom axis of the chart to locate the line that shows the child's age in months. He finds the point on the chart where the line for the child's weight meets the line for the child's age. The health worker decides if the point is above, on or below the bottom curve. If the point is below the bottom curve, the child is very low weight for age. If the point is above or on the bottom curve, the child is not very low weight for age. Pallor is unusual paleness of the skin. It's a sign of anemia. To see if the child has palmar pallor, the health worker looks at the skin on the child's palm. He holds the child's palm open by grasping it gently from the side. He should not stretch the fingers backwards. This may cause pallor by blocking the blood supply. The health worker compares the colour of the child's palm with your own palm and with the palms of other children. If the skin of the child's palm is pale, the child has some palmar pallor. If the skin of the palm is very pale, or so pale that it looks white, the child has severe palm pallor. There are three classifications for a child's nutritional status. They are severe malnutrition or severe anemia, very low weight or anemia, or not very low weight and no anemia. If the child has visible severe wasting, severe palm pallor, or edema of both feet, the health worker classifies the child as having severe malnutrition or severe anemia. If the child is very low weight for age or has some palmar pallor, the health worker classifies the child as having very low weight or anemia. If the child is not very low weight for age and there are no other signs of malnutrition, classify the child as having not very low weight and no anemia.